Okay, so this is almost the last talk today. It's almost seven. So let me try to uh, show you some pictures and um, boil your blood a little bit. See your reactions. Okay, I guess that's enough. Uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Jonas, I work at Blockstream in the research group and I'm going to talk about a little project I'm working on with a few other contributors in my spare time that's called Nix Bitcoin. And the starting point for me was basically this. As we've heard a couple of times today, many people want to set up a lightning node. Same hell for me. So uh, I would have, if I wanted to do that, I would have had to set up another Bitcoin node. And as part of my job, and also at home, I've done that quite a few times. And uh, if, you if you do it often enough, it becomes really annoying. We've seen earlier uh, in a presentation by Alekos how to do it uh, exactly, but um, you should do it once and not uh, anymore because he he didn't show everything you may want to also set up onion services you may have to move rpc passwords around you have may have to create additional users just for particular processes to isolate them from each other and um, this is really no fun so what people recommended to me was hey you should use a more systematic approach and what i wanted was a single configuration file for a system, a text file that can be in version control. It should use abstractions to reduce complex, uh, complexity like a programming language and it should reduce statefulness so it would be easy to maintain. So people pointed uh, the Nix ecosystem out. And um, this is uh, there are a couple of projects under this umbrella. Let's look into a few of them. Um, first and foremost, there's Nix, the purely functional package manager. And what that means is that um, this package manager has no side effects. So you have a specification for how to build a package and it will always create the same result from the same uh, dependencies. So I'm going to show you how this specification looks like. This shouldn't be intimidating for you uh, if you don't understand it. It doesn't matter for the rest of this talk. You don't have to interact with it if you just want to use Nix Bitcoin, but I wanted to give you a taste of how this looks like. So this is the derivation written in a Nix expression, which is the functional uh, language to create the Bitcoin D package. And what this actually is, is a function taking arguments, which are the dependencies, for example, OpenSSL, um, and so on, and it returns a derivation. And it specifies that the source code must be from coming from some URL with a particular hash. You specify exactly the build inputs, and you specify configure flags. And, um, because this is a programming language, you can also include more elaborate logic, like for example, only if the with GUI flag is set, then you include these dependencies. So you can use this Nix expression to build uh, the Bitcoin package. Then there's Nix OS. This is a Linux distribution with a declarative approach to configuration management built on top of Nix. And what declarative approach means is that there's a single configuration file where you specify how you want your system to look like. Then you run a command which takes this configuration file and builds the system. So let's look at, it, at an example. This is an example configuration Nix. Again, it's a function taking a configuration and packages. It imports a hardware configuration that's usually auto-generated um, by NixOS. And then you can simply say services.bitcoindenable enable true. And once you run the NixOS rebuild switch command, it will actually enable a systemd service 
that runs Bitcoin D. You can also specify other things. For example, uh, you can explicitly specify the port Bitcoin D is running on. And um, then you can say, okay, I want a hidden service for Bitcoin. And that's then just three lines in this case where you say you want to map this hidden Tor hidden service to this particular port that you have uh, previously set. Next piece of the puzzle is the collection of Nix packages and NixOS modules. This is a GitHub project. It's um, pretty transparent what's, what's happening there. People create pull requests with new versions of packages. They get merged and then you can easily use them. Uh, I should point out that the Nix package manager you can install on uh, most Linux distros. And then there's Nix Ops, which is now a declarative tool for deploying sets of Nix OS Linux machines. Um, so how this looks like is this. You define in the Nix expression, you define your Bitcoin node as a function, taking configuration packages and returning a set of attributes. In this case, you want to deploy to a virtual box. You set uh, how you want your system to look like, and then you can create the network with this Nix ops create command, and then you can deploy the network. How is this a more <laughs> systematic approach? You can do the whole deployment and the update with a single command. Uh, you have reproducibility because it's functional. You will always get the same result, meaning you can also do stuff like rollbacks. If something doesn't work, you can just roll it back. This makes it easy to use um, if you know command line stuff, of course. Uh, and also because you have uh, the dependencies under very tight control. You always know what you use. This also has benefits for security. Uh, it uses a simple functional typed language and um, apart from the Nix stuff, under the hood it uses uh, fairly standard Linux tools like for example systemd services. So let's see how this, uh, how the types in the Nix expressions actu can actually help. So this is our example from before where we specify the Bitcoin D port in order to be able to use it uh, later in the hidden service um, configuration. The port is of type null or an unsigned integer 16 bit. So what would happen if I would uh, forget to set that line here. If, if that line would be removed, then Bitcoin D would use the default port, but the port for Nix would be um, null. So um, this wouldn't actually uh, be a valid Nix expression. So um, the Nix ops or the Nix tools will immediately say this doesn't work because I need to get a port and not null. So this helps to make uh, mis uh, this helps reducing mistakes when writing these configuration files. Okay, so now back to Nix Bitcoin. What is it? It's a set of Nix packages and NixOS modules with profiles. We are going to talk about that later for easily installing Bitcoin nodes and higher level protocols. So uh, the first thing, if you want to try this out, is you need to find a deployment target. I uh, use this thing. This is uh, like form factor. You see my hands. It's quite small. I think it was about uh, 300 bucks. Um, it's from Gigabyte, but there are many uh, companies building uh, these kinds of machines. Um, yeah, you would need something like four gigabytes of memory and um, something on the order of Intel Celeron and enough space depending on what you want to do. Um, one of the ideas is also that you should have fun with this system so you don't want to use a Raspberry Pi probably because then you uh, have to spend a lot of time trying to work around um, uh, this, the limitations of a Raspberry Pi. Uh, there's a tutorial in the repositories uh, README 
for how to deploy it in a virtual box if you want to try it out. And you also need a ma machine to deploy from. This would be your personal net, uh, laptop. Right now, uh, it must be x86 Linux. And then you can clone the project. And um, in the projects directory, there will be a configuration.nix file. Uh, we don't have a fancy wizard. You have to uh, change text uh, files. So you, you look into these fix me's and uh, you basically follow the instructions. For example, uh, you need to include your personal hardware configuration if you're not deploying on, vir uh, on VirtualBox. You want to enable Nix Bitcoin. Uh, you want to set a profile. So right now there's the minimal profile and the all profile. The minimal profile only installs Bitcoin D and C Lightning, while C Lightning is not listening. It's only for outbound connections and all basically installs everything. Uh, you want to define your host name. You probably want to turn off binary caches. So by default it's uh, turned off such that you build from source and not download it from some, uh, from some build server. And then you add some packages you also want in your system, like Vim, HTOP, uh, Tmux, or whatever. Um, OK, and then it looks like this. I hope it's big enough. So you start the Nix shell. And um, the Nix shell sets the environment variables and generates secrets if they haven't been generated before. So now we are uh, deploying to a fresh virtual box. For that, we create the network with a provided uh, network files and we call this new network fresh deployment and now we deploy our new network um, we give it an additional flag because there are bugs in VirtualBox and we write the output to a file and not to a standard out so we don't see it here okay done um, so now we can SSH into the machine and let's see what's running there. Okay, so that worked. So the first thing we do is the node info command. This uh, returns a couple of onion services that are currently running on the system. So one of them is uh, Nginx. So uh, it, there's a small uh, web page generated by um, Nix Bitcoin, which currently just displays your um, uh, C Lightning node ID and also. Uh, the onion address and there's also a link to a, a little nanopos store that you can use uh, there's a special a user called operator which is able to access uh, the whole system like Bitcoin CLI and um, lightning but doesn't have root privileges so you don't have to switch uh, users every time there's also liquid on the system and um, spark wallet Yep. Okay. Um, okay, back to this node info command. It's basically the first step. Uh, you can run it as the operator user. See, there's Bitcoin, Onion, C Lightning, Liquid, Spark Wallet. Uh, there's also uh, Electris running on the system if you enable it. And there's an SSH Onion if you want to. Uh, SSH into your node from outside, but don't want to deal with uh, NAT issues. Um, okay, so um, I guess Nadaf is going to talk more about Spark Wallet. But the way this works is that you just look into the logs of Spark Wallet, you see a QR code, then you can use, I use the Android app, I scan the code, and I also need to run this additional app on Android called Orbot to tunnel the traffic through Tor. This might sound very janky, but actually it's very reliable. For me, it just works. Uh, I just checked, I've um, done more than 200 payments, through uh, lightning payments through my uh, phone already. So this mostly works. Or basically for me, it has always worked so far. Um, interesting would be how to uh, customize this thing so one easy thing you can do is you can change the profile but there's only two so right now so that's not very interesting um, you can also check the available module options in the modules directory and add them to the configuration.nix so for example you can set uh, specific pruning parameters uh, you can change the db cache to speed up um, syncing 
and also you can change, for example, uh, if C Lightning should just listen on localhost or be available from the outside as well. If an option is not available, then either you need to open an issue in our GitHub repo, so we can uh, try to add this option, or you can try to define it yourself. So let's look into the C Lightning module. This is a Nix expression, a function taking configuration, library, packages. And here it writes the configuration file. So you see auto listen is the option uh, that defines whether uh, C Lightning should listen or not. And that is set to a Nix expression, which says that if the configuration, if the option auto listen is true, then we put the string true there or else we put the string false there. Um, then you need to define the option here. So you say auto listen is an option. Uh, it's a Boolean. By default, it's false. And you add a little description. And uh, at, at the bottom, this basically says that if uh, C Lightning is enabled, then you register a C Lightning service. It's, um, it's spawned after Bitcoin D. Uh, it's spawned like this. And you run it as a user uh, C Lightning. OK, so I started out by saying that this is mostly for us who are contributing to this project. We are interested in running our personal node, and we just install whatever seems interesting to us. But it could be a little bit more. It could be a platform where you uh, can deploy some software to, uh, for example, for public infrastructure or as a personal wallet. There's a lot of things we want to add, like from basic things like improving ease of use uh, by making backups easier and updates to uh, more security hardening, um, but also adding more software, for example, to improve privacy uh, and also hardware wallet support, hopefully with the next um, Bitcoin Core version. Um, if you want to try it out, just go to the repository, follow the tutorial. It's relatively detailed. I'm also here uh, to help, both physical and online. And also, please develop more software that we can deploy um, on the node. And let's do some beering later today, where we drink beer and uh, peer our lightning nodes and open channel and so on. Thank you. So let's uh, let's keep the stream from the the output from the computer. Thank you, John. So uh, this uh, this demo will be very quick. That's actually the purpose of the demo, hopefully. So now you will understand why, and then we will try again with uh, Nadav and, and and Spark and Charge. So uh, John, that you already know uh, from the panels, will uh, now introduce you the. The, the reason this demo should not take a lot of your time. problems and now John with the demo so a few times today you probably heard me bring up bit refill and what we do is in the lightning uh, network area and our first service that we provided was called Thor and Thor is basically a way to have us open a channel with our node from our node to you to be able to hop onto the lightning ne network and receive payments so it basically consisted of the ability to choose an amount of capacity